Hello, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to host a website with Beaker. We're also going to give you a quick little introduction to the uh, Beaker web browser. Um, if you want to see more of these blockchain, peer-to-peer, -peer, cryptocurrency, and programming videos, uh, please subscribe. I'm trying to do a 30-day challenge where I post a new video every single day. So subscribe if you want to see more. So on to the Beaker browser. So it's, it is a web browser. Um, this is pulled directly from um, their website. So the Beaker Browser is a peer-to-peer -peer browser with, not redundant, the Beaker browser. Beaker is a peer-to-peer -peer browser with tools to create and host websites. So um, how does a web browser normally work? Okay, a web browser sends a request to a server and then that server sends an HTML file to the browser. This is a really, really simplified way of explaining it, but it is basically the way it works. Every what page you go to basically works like this. There might be some variations, but once again, basically that's the way it works. Uh, we're gonna call this the centralized web. This centralized web does have some problems. Um, like one of the problems is the distance between the um, server and the client, that causes latency, right? Um, the speed of light is very fast, but you know, electronics still, you know, with their amazing communication abilities, still takes more time for me to communicate with a server in like Hong Kong than it does to communicate one that's in um, Portland, if, if I'm in Seattle, of course. Um, also, if the server's off, it, it won't be sending any files. And the server also has limited bandwidth, right? It can only serve so many files. Like let's say it's um, sharing um, MP3 files. You know, you can look, you can do the math and figure out, oh, I have this much bandwidth. We've got, you know, uh, gigabit connection, but that means I can only serve so many files at once. You also have the problem that comes up of the CPU can only handle so many requests per se seconds. Uh, if you've ever had a WordPress site, you may have ran into this thing where if too many people start coming to your site, it slows down, can break, can crash. It, it can be very frustrating. I mean, there's a lot of options to fix that, but it's still a frustration. Um, we can mitigate some of these technology or some of these problems with peer to peer technologies. Um, imagine if the web worked more like BitTorrent. After I download a file, that data can be shared by everybody and share it with whoever. Uh, I'm in Seattle downloading cat pictures from a server in New York. So let's just imagine, right? And you're also in Seattle. You also want to download those same cat pictures from a server in New York. Instead of downloading them from that server in New York, why can't you just download them from me? I have them, I'm really close to you. It'd be faster for us and be better for the server in New York. And if a file is really popular, there'd be like many, many people all around the world that would have copies to share. It'd be very fast. It's almost like automatically creating a giant CDN all around the world. Um, this takes the load off that server in New York and distributes it all amongst the clients. Um, it can also work sometimes even if the server's off, right? If enough people have downloaded those files that was popular enough, it'll still remain on the network for a certain amount of time, even when the server is off because the, your peers have it. We all have copies. Um, so we're gonna call this the decentralized web. The decentralized web is evolving very, very fast. Um, there's several protocols out there right now, like you may have heard of, um, I did another video for IPFS. That's another one that's kind of getting along this same idea of the distributed web, um, kind of being a replacement for HTTP. Um, the DAT protocol, which is what we're gonna be focusing on right now and in this video, is the one that Beaker, the Beaker browser uses, the DAT protocol. The, yeah, the beaker is dapper. Yes, <laughs> um, the beaker is an unusual web browser. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to have these talks about the um, the read write web, where you know the, everyone would be a publisher and everyone would be a consumer. And that really that's gotten kind of weird now. Not quite so much. And I always really wanted to be able to publish websites directly from my browser. You know, and this beaker does that. Um, beaker can act both as a client and a server, which is amazing. I mean, it, it blows me away. So if you go to um, BeakerBrowser.com, this is what the website looks like. It may look different when you eventually get to it. You can uh, install the Beaker Browser. It's gonna, it'll operate much the same as, you know, Brave or Chrome or Firefox. Now it's time for a demo. 
Okay, now for the demo, as you can see, the uh, Beaker browser looks like any other web browser. You can go wherever you want. You can go Twitter. Yeah, no, that that's to be expected. But you can also go to these interesting things. If you look at this website, you'll see it says secure peer to peer, and the protocol here instead of it being HTTP or HTTPS, it is DAT. It is the data protocol that we talked about briefly earlier. And then the corner actually tells you the number of peers you're sharing it with. But we don't, we don't, that's a little bit, we're not going to show those, those yet. Um, so if you want to make a, a website, so a website that anybody else with this browser can view, you go to new site. We're going to say demo. Let's see if this works. I think I already have a demo site up here. Okay, so I've got my demo site. I'm just going to go add files. And go to my root. Oh, I have hidden files showing. That's always fun. And index HTML. Because it's just it, this is just a really basic hello world. So I've added my files. You can add any kind of files you want, just like any other web server. And I'll just show you how crazy simple this is. So publish, boom, it's been published. Now if I want to share it with somebody, and this is the address, we're gonna copy that, make a new tab, paste it in there, boom. Now it's been published. That's how easy it is. It's crazy easy. It's that that was a demo. That's it. That's how quick it was. Okay, uh, welcome back. We've just got done with our quick little um, demo of how to host a site with um, the Beaker browser. There are some problems we should talk about. Um, the site only works while the browser is running. When you stop the browser, it stops working. And the URL, if you notice, was long and ugly. Um, it's also not reachable by other browsers. So if I gave that link to someone running like Chrome, they're not going to be able to see it or access it rather. But um, the solution is the DAT HTTP server. Um, but we're going to be covering that in a video maybe next week. So now you've seen how to host a very simple website with a Beaker browser. Something to keep in mind is you it's mostly going to be for static stuff right now, although you can do some dy dynamic stuff, but we're just going to be covering the static stuff. Um, if you like this video, hit that like button and follow me on Twitter. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the, of course, the, the, the comments below. And um, thank you so very much for watching this video.